seated. Our scripture reading today is very familiar to all of us. Psalms 100 is our scripture for today. Let's say it together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May we say amen to the blading of his word. Those that have special requests, would you raise your hand? The Lord knows what's on your heart. As far as possible, shall we kneel for prayer? Father, we thank you so much for the many blessings and the many things that you have given us. We pray as we come before you that your spirit will guide us and lead us. Be with the speaker of the hour. May your spirit bless him. May you take, bring a coal from the altar to touch his lips and to guide him in everything that he says. We pray that as we come to you that each person that raised their hand will receive a blessing in the way that you see fit. We leave it in your hands and we thank you that you have blessed us. This we ask in Jesus' loving and precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, just for the sake of the, our guest, I will just introduce two persons at this time before I do the offering. Um, well, I am Pastor Maxwell, Renel Maxwell, and um, we have Jim Connell. So if you saw him do the other part that I should be doing, then we just want to correct the name that that I am Renel Maxwell, and that's Brother Elder Jim Connell. All right. God bless. <laughs> so.
So if you notice in the bulletin, he was doing all what I should be doing, and now I'm going to do what he should be doing. <laughs> so that's the reason for in, in <laughs> All right. Today's offering is going to be our, for our local church budget. And I want to say thanks to everyone for your generous giving from time to time over these years. God has been blessing. And let us remember at all times that God blesses our giving and he blesses us as we give. As the song, uh, uh, there's a little song or even scripture, but a song rather said, you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. And just as sure as you are living, the Lord is in heaven and high. The more you give, the more he gives to you. So keep on giving because it's really true that you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. So may the Spirit of God bless us in a special way. Uh, remember that whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever sows generously will also reap generously. God's, God loves a cheerful giver. So I invite you to be a cheerful giver and sow abundantly by providing for our local budget. May the Spirit of God bless each one of us. We invite the deacons to stand at this time as we ask the Lord's blessing and the tithe and offering. Loving God and Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your generosity towards us. And we pray that as we give today, your blessing will be on each one of us. And that the offering and the tithe that we return to you will go forward for its intended purpose. And we all will be blessed. Hear us. Thank you for hearing us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. this time we are going to invite um, our dear Sister Johnson. She will be coming to give us the children's story. And while she is coming, we invite all the little ones, the children to come to the front. Wherever you are, just come down. If you are in the mother's room, just come around, come to the front. Wherever you are, we have a lovely uh, message that we want to share with you at this time. So just come along and we will have that message for you. Amen.
Hello, good morning. It's so nice to have children come up to listen to a children's story. Sometimes in our little church in Michigan, we, we have a membership of right around 50 or a little under. And you know, when you ha- your membership is never quite met on a Sabbath unless you have the church school coming in to do a program and all of their parents are coming from the other churches that are... Anyway, that's what's happening in Manton today. Our church will be overflowing because the children from the church school up there are coming to do the whole program for our church service. You could do that someday. But I wanted to ask you this morning, do you like to swim? Yes. Do you like to ride in boats? I do too. I think I could live on the water. I would love that. I think swimming and riding in boats. I tried water skiing once and I got up, but I didn't stay up. So that wasn't too fun of an experience. But anyway, I love being on the water. And when I was a little girl, I'm going to say, you look like you're about between seven and nine. How old are you? Eight? She was right between seven and nine. Was I a good guesser or what? Anyway, how old are you? You're eight too, so right between, yes. Well, we lived on a farm, and this farm had a pond on it. And this pond was so inviting to just go down, and there was just a little area that wasn't all muck and all swampy. Would you pick that up for Mr. Connell? Thank you so much. What a kind child beautiful girl, all of you. Anyway, my brother, we, we would go down and we would get, we'd kind of try to swim in it, but there wasn't much area to swim. So my brother decided he was going to build a boat. And all we had was old scrap lumber, pieces that were not very good, not really good enough to build a boat. But he was four years older than me, and like I say, I was about eight years old. And he said, when he got the boat done, we could go for out on the pond with it. So we did. He got it done, and we went out on the pond. And we didn't get past very far from where you could actually go swimming until the boat started going boom, 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 down. And we had to walk back to the shore. <laughs> but I want to tell you, where it was past swimming, it was really mucky and yucky and dirty, and I didn't like it. So I said I'd never ride in one of his boats again. But my story today, even though I tell you that story, is about another boat. It was about a little rowboat, nice little rowboat, that they could put a motor on, and they could take it out and go out jumping off of it and swimming, or, or they could even go out and fish or go out and sit in the middle of the lake and read a book if they wanted to. But it needed to be painted. It was looking pretty shabby. And Dad decided it needed to be painted. So he hired a guy to come and paint the boat. And he came and he painted that boat a beautiful, beautiful red. It was so pretty. And then when, the, when, the, when Daddy got home, the man was just finishing up, so he gave him his check and he paid him for painting that boat. Wonderful. But the next day, Daddy went and he visited the man who painted the boat to do something else. What do you think it was? Do you think he decided it wasn't such a good paint job? No, he went to give him a much larger check. And the man told him, he said, the painter of the boat, he says, sir, you paid me for painting the boat, and this is way too much money. And he says, no, it's not. He says, I do not have enough money to pay you for what you did to that boat. Because, sir, you do not know what happened. He says, I came home from work that night, and the boat had dried And my children had decided they were going to take it out on the lake. And he said, I knew that they were gone with it because I could see their footprints in the sand around where it was up there. And they'd gotten it off the thing that was up in the air to keep it dry. He said, I knew they had done this. He says, I just knew. But he says, no matter how far I looked, I could not see them on that boat. And he says, I started praying. Lord, I don't know where my children are, but I trust them in your hands and I give them completely to you. And he says, I just stayed there and I waited and I kept looking and looking. And he says, I didn't have any way to go out. He said, pretty soon here comes the boat. He says, that boat should have sunk, sir. He told the man who had painted it. It should have sunk. But he says, and you, in your care, when you were painting the boat, you fixed the hole that was up in the front where my children would have sunk and most likely drowned. He says, I can't give you enough money 
to tell you how thankful I am for what you've done for my children. You know, we can't give enough, like here to the church, for offerings or things we can do to help other people to have a good day, like this precious little one here. We can't do enough, like helping mom, helping grandma, helping brother or sister. We just can't do enough to help them and do kind deeds as they can't for us because we cannot, as it was just said up here, we cannot outgive the Lord. And the Lord gave his all. He gave his son, our Lord God in heaven, gave his son Jesus that we might someday be able to walk on that road of gold, the streets of gold, and ski on the sea of glass and swim in the river of life. And I'm looking forward to that day. So let's pledge our hearts to Jesus, okay? Let's have prayer. Father, we want to just share with you this morning how much we love you and how much we thank you for the sacrifice of your son. We thank you, Jesus, for being willing to make that sacrifice, and we thank you for that promise. Your blood has covered all of our sins today and the sins to come if we just release them all to you and give them back and say, please forgive me and help me never to do it again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for that message for the children. And then I also want to <clears throat> say welcome to everyone who have come to worship today. When we come to worship God, we know that the Spirit of God is here with us. And we trust that as you worship today, you will be blessed. We have come from different places to fellowship with one another and to worship our loving God. Well, I was um, told uh, just in the foyer that Bob and Rosie will be leaving us shortly. I don't remember the exact date, but you ought to just, just to remind us, Brother Bob, what time you'll be leaving us. Next week, he will be gone back to Michigan, but he promised that he will come again. I, I don't know how soon. <laughs> I, I, uh? All right, so we are delighted and happy that you have come from time to time to spend such beautiful fellowship with us. And um, all those who come down from Michigan, we are always joyful and happy to see you coming down. And thank you, thank you very much. And I don't know if everyone will be leaving about the same time. Uh, brother and Sister Dewitt, you will stay a little longer? Three weeks more. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, uh, brother... Until the night. So you. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. So while you're here, whatever you we can do, just let us know. We will give you all the support that we can give. And may the Spirit of God bless every member, every guest who have come. Um, my dear sister, notify me that she will be. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't say her age, but she will be going up to New York to celebrate her birthday. Uh, just raise your hand so they can see the birthday celebrant. I don't know if you want me to say your age or not, so I'm not going to say your age. <laughs> all, all right, so pastor said sweet 16. He didn't say anything else but 16. <laughs> so may God bless you. As the good book says, uh, behold how blessed and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. So today we have um, our speaker.
Our speaker is Pastor Norman Harding. I know Pastor Harding for, for quite a while. And those of you who have been at Westerners College during my time, it's a long time. And so he was there when I was there. And he was kind of my boss when it comes to lunch time. I could not eat except he tells me to eat. Could not join the line except he said, go join the line of the sit and wait. And he was very serious and very disciplined where that is concerned. So they are not going the line except he tells me that. But he has been a man of God. His school has utilizes gifts from God to promote Christian education. And he go all over the the island to promote Christian education and invite young men and young women to come to the Westernist College. It was then known as Westernist College. It's now Northern Caribbean University. And we are happy that he pastored in the West Jamaica Conference for many years, and then he pastored in the Florida Conference for many years. And you wouldn't believe that. This that I that is now retired. Wow. He, 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 he is a young man, but he's retired. And we are happy. <laughs> we are happy that he has been speaking with us online in our service, and then he has been speaking at the Riverview Church, and we are happy that he is here to speak with us at Wesley Chapel. His wife, Sister Sharon, is here with us. Sister Sharon, would you just indicate by raising her hands, she is sitting right over there. They work as a team, so we are delighted to have her worshiping with us. But also we have uh, Sister Maudlin Young, who drove them to church this morning. And so Sister Maudlin Young, she lives in the area. So when Pastor and Sister Harding are gone back to South Florida, she will be right here with us. So we are going to invite her to become a member of this church in Wesley Chapel and fellowship with us right here. And God will continue to bless us as we worship and as we work together. We are so thankful that the Spirit of God has given a message to Pastor Harding and he will bring the message to us at this time. So may God bless you as you open your hearts and open your minds to receive the message from the Lord. Thank you. Maxwell has said, my name is Norman Harding, and I'm very delighted to be in your service today, to be with you. Pastor, I am very happy for your invitation to be here, and for the kindness that you have shown to me. I have spoken at uh, his churches and uh, and I'm very happy to be here to speak to you today. It's my delight. And I'm not alone. My wife is with me. And, uh, and my wife's sister is with us today. Amen. Sister Maudlin Young. She was a Linton. And my wife is, was a Linton also. And I was about to say, is a Linton, but then I remember that he's not Linton anymore. <laughs> but she, she delights in her maiden name, and she loves it very much. So every now and again, I have to remind her, remember that you're a Linton. That's right. So, Sister Maudlin, we're very pleased to be at your church today. I remember when we moved to Florida uh, 23 years ago, 
that we spend some time here with with our dear sister Maudlin. And uh, publicly, I want to thank you very much for the kindness that you've shown to our family and your sister. Thank you so much. And uh, we have three girls, so we and we have two grandchildren. And uh, as Pastor said, I am retired, but I am not tired. <laughs> Thank you so much, so much for inviting me to be with you today. We live in South Florida, as a matter of fact. We live in Miramar, and that's where we have been living since we came here over 20 years ago. It's my joy to present to you the word of God. And again, Pastor, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's my friend. Oh, by the way, I still remember you at the cafeteria. <laughs> yes, I worked in the cafeteria when I was in school. He was very obedient. <laughs> and he would never go to the line to get his food unless I sent him up. Yes, that's the system there. For those of you who have never heard of West Indies College in Jamaica, once you enter the cafeteria, you everybody had to be seated. You could never go for your food unless you were sent. And that was one of my jobs. And but then every now and again you would see somebody walking out with the food that was not sent. But he was never like that. He was a very disciplined and orderly gentleman. Thank you so much, Pastor. And may God continue to bless you and your ministry and your dear wife. And I know that she is always very supportive of the ministry and of the church. Thank you so much. I'm going to invite you to go with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 100. And uh, those of us like Pastor Maxwell who speak about the word of God we usually refer to it as the hundred division of the psalm. Because the psalm is divided in five books. After the division of the Pentateuch. So whereas you have the five uh, Old Testament books. And the books of Moses influenced. Then the psalm. Every part of the psalm is attached to one of the five books of the Pentateuch. So we usually refer to the division of the psalm because of their division. The verse I'm going to read for you today from Psalm 100 is verse 3. It says here, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Let's pray. Loving Lord, you have honored us today to be in your courts, in your sanctuary. And we come now for you to speak directly to our hearts through your word. We pray that the word will be potent and that we will be strengthened and fed and we will be fed by it. May your divine presence now guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have entitled the message today, Do You Know Him? And of course the text says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Psalm 100 
carries the inscription or the name a psalm of praise. So this is one of the psalms of praise to God. And there are seven component parts to this psalm. And this has made it very versatile and made it easy to be handled. And it's one of the psalms that is well loved. As a matter of fact, it is said that apart from the 23rd psalm, the shepherd psalm, Psalm 100 is the next in line in favor. And so we are very happy this morning that the Lord has given us this word. So it is divided into seven, seven parts. And I will give you all seven parts, beginning with A. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. B. Serve the Lord with gladness. C. Come before his presence with singing. D. Know that the Lord, he is God. And E. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. F. Be thankful unto him. And G. Bless his name. Now, in, in the Adventist circle, when we look at the word seven, we usually think of it as a perfect number. So we have, for example, the seventh day Sabbath. And so seven features very prominently in the gospel story. And so here we have the Psalm 100 with the seven component parts. And so the part that I will speak in today is D. It says, know that the Lord, he is God. The Amplified Version puts it this way. It says, know and fully recognize with gratitude that the Lord is our God. And when you look a little deeper at this text where it says the Lord it know ye that the Lord he is God it really means he himself and not another so here we are this morning looking at the psalm and then we see here that the creator is the only being that must be worshipped and the creator is the only being that has supremacy over life. It doesn't matter how educated and versed the human being becomes. He does not know how to create life. And in as much as God has given human being the knowledge of saving life that is the furthest we can go save life but we can't create life and so we're very happy that God and you ought to be happy too that God has given you life it is the greatest commodity that we have without life we have nothing and it doesn't matter what you have accomplished in life. As you live, you live and you move because of God. Amen. And so, no God is very imperative for salvation. You cannot go to heaven. We cannot go into the, in the life to come. Unless we know God or know Jesus Christ whom God has sent. And so Jesus 
says to his disciple. In John chapter 17 and verse 3 he says. And this is life eternal. And what is life eternal? The question is what is life eternal? The answer to this is that they may know thee. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In other words, life has no meaning unless we know God. And unless we, we honor him. You know, God is very great and good. And, uh, and I'm glad that you are not God. And you are to be overjoyed that I am not God. Because there are some things that I would do if I were God. I'm glad that my God doesn't do that. So he says here. That we must know God. Now to know God is not a mere intellectual awareness. To know God transcends a casual acquaintance. And this is the way to eternal life. That's what the Bible says here. This is the way to have eternal life. To know God. The only true God. And Jesus Christ. The one that I have sent. And so true knowledge of God. And his character. Is essential for salvation. If we know not God. Then we cannot be holy. If we do not know God. We will not grieve over our sins. If we do not know God. If we do not know God. We will not know how to forgive. And be merciful. We will have no hope of forgiveness if we don't know God. So knowing God intimately brings rest to a troubled heart. Knowing God intimately brings stability to a dysfunctional soul. Knowing God intimately brings peace to a restless heart. Knowing God intimately puts us on the path to eternal life. There is no life after death for those who don't know God. So, the question is, how do we know God? And how to know Jesus Christ, whom God has sent. Many people believe that the key to knowing the Lord as God is to accumulate knowledge about God. The accumulation of knowledge is good, but it is not equal to knowing God. Knowing about God is totally different from knowing God. There are many people that I know about. I've read about them. I've heard about them. But I don't know them. And here in Psalm 40 and verse 8. The Bible says here. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. Yea. Thy law is within my heart. Knowing the Lord personally. Allows us to experience his presence. In our lives and in our heart. If God is not in us. Then our living is in vain. So knowing the Lord personally. Allows us. To experience his presence daily and a very, in a very special way. So if I were to ask you, any one of you, do you know God? And you might say yes. 
Or somebody might say, well, I am trying to know him. Well, that's good, but that's not enough. To know God here is to have an understanding of who he is and what he does. What do you mean to him? Knowing the Lord personally allows us to be with him and he with you. So what happens when we truly believe that the Lord is God? What happens? When we know and truly believe, truly believe that the Lord is God, there are three things that happen to us. How many did I say? Three. Three. And I will, let's start with A. The believer who knows God personally receives the gift of salvation. And that is the greatest gift that is given to humanity. The gift of salvation. And knowing God, we receive the gift of salvation and we are purified. We are what church? We are purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now why do we need to be purified? We need to be purified because we have all been stained by sin. We need to be purified because all of us have been poisoned by sin. And so we all need this purification. And this purification does not come from the medicine or the medication that your doctor prescribes when you go and see him or her. What you need here is the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why the song the writer says, what can wash away my sin? And the song writer follows up by saying what? Nothing but the what? The blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus purifies us, it cleanses us, and it sets us apart of children, as children of God. And so... Here in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And listen to this. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from what? From all sin, all unrighteousness. And I am glad that the potency of the blood it prevails in every situation and in every dimension. So, yes, we are happy for the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are happy that we can know him. The second thing that happened here when we know Jesus is that the believer becomes obedient and begins to keep the commandments of God joyfully. Not, not is that he is forced to do so, but he keeps the commandment of God joyfully. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 24, the Bible says, Those who obey his commandment live in him. So it's not that you are keeping the commandment of God. You are living in Jesus Christ. And he, in turn, lives within us. And the, the verse says, And this is how we know that he live in us. We know it by the spirit he gives to us. 
And so, as believers, we one of our, one of our first obligations is to know God. And the result of knowing him is that we receive the gift of salvation. And the second thing after you receive the gift of salvation, the believer becomes obedient. And not that you are forced to be obedient, but you do so joyfully. Recognizing what God has done for us as sinners. And, and in appreciation for what he has done for us, we, we certainly throw ourselves on him and then we worship him in spirit and in truth. So those who obey his commandment live in him. Not only do we live in him, but we live by him. Not only do we live by him, but we live because of him. This is how we know him, that he lives in us. Number C, knowing God, the believer begins to walk as Jesus walks. And so in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, beginning at verse 3, the Bible says, says here, this is how we know we are in him. How do we know that we are in him? Whosoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus walks. Now, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. And then the refrain says, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be what? To be happy in Jesus, but to what? Trust and obey. Now, trust here is one of the component parts of salvation. Because if you don't trust God that he's able to do what he says he's going to do, then you are not going to follow him. As a matter of fact, it's very hard to, to, to follow people that you don't trust. And, uh, and one of the reasons what, why I have, well, let me put it the other way. One of the reasons why my wife has tolerated me <laughs> over all these years and has been very instrumental in giving meet three lovely girls is because she trusts me. Amen. I And uh, I don't know if I've given her enough reason to trust me, but life here does not go very well when you're in business with people that you don't trust. And one of the greatest business that human beings can be involved in is to give yourselves over to others. Because if you're going to give yourself over to others, what are the questions that's going to linger in your mind? Do you think that I can trust that person? And you have to rise to the level where you trust God. 
Not only do you trust him, but you believe in him and believe his word. And today, I want to ask you the question today. Do you know God? And if you know him, do you trust him? And if you trust him, do you know him? So it's a, it's a question that repeats itself. So today, my brothers and sisters, the psalmist says here, know that the Lord, he is God. And who is this God? Who is this being that says that he is God? As I close today, I want to remind you that look back over your life in retrospect. Look at where you are coming from. Look at what he has done for you over these years. Or let me put it another way. Do you attribute to God the good things in your life? That is a question. Do you attribute to God the praise and the honor and the glory to him? Despite who you have been. And despite who I have been, I am not worthy of the goodness of God. There is nothing in me that will elicit the goodness of God unless it is first of all in God's will and his purpose to be good. And so today, I want to ask you, do you know him? Do you really know him? And if you know him, do you trust him? Know that the Lord, he is God. Do you know him? It is he that has made us. And because he has made us, and he has made us from the finest material. He has made us so sturdy. He has made us so well. That only he. Who has, known, who has made us. Knows how. To take care of us. And because he has made us. He knows how to take care of us. So I say to you today, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We trust that each one of us will know God personally and will keep growing in grace because there is a great day that is coming and because he lives, we can face tomorrow. 2.51, because he lives.
you today and ask you to make sure that as you live your life daily that one of the quests that you will have is to know God on a personal level. <coughs> know God for who he is the eternal source of man's survival. No God for who he is, the eternal source of man's salvation. To know God for who he really is, the God of eternal love. And I'm glad that God loves me. Amen. And I don't deserve it. I remember when our children were growing. The first song we taught them. Was Jesus loves me this I know. For the Bible tells me so. They could hardly call the words. But they were able to learn the song. And thank God. That he loves us. And before we sing. The final stanza. I'm going to invite Sister Harding. To join me here. And. Uh, as she comes. Is there anyone here today. That needs a special prayer. I will ask the prayer warrior. To pray for you today. Hear anyone. And as I sing this, as we sing this, the final stanza, if you want her to offer this special prayer on your behalf today, I'm going to ask you to join us right here as we sing this stanza. Rejoice, rejoice, a Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah. To Jesus Christ, our King. Rejoice, rejoice, stand, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah to Jesus Christ, our King.
our God, our Father. We come to you now giving you thanks, Lord, that you live. You not only just live in heaven, but you live within our hearts. We praise and magnify, glorify, exalt and honor your holy name because you are our God. We thank you, Lord, for the words that you have brought to us today, reminding us that we serve a risen God. Yes. We come before you at this moment with our various needs. You know us all, Lord. You know us by name. You know us by nature. You know what bothers us, and you know what gives us joy. Those who have come just now, Lord, and even those who are standing in the pew, you know everything about us. You know when we leave here what we will face. You know what bothered us last night and what kept us awake. You know every desire of our hearts. And so, God, we just bring them now to your altar, and we leave them here. We know that you are the God who is almighty, and there is nothing that is impossible for you. And so, God, we leave them with you just now because we know that you, are, you have promised us that you will be there for us. And we claim that promise in your name. We pray, dear God, that whatever bothers you will give us the strength to put it aside. We pray, dear Lord, that whatever concerns us, you have promised us that we should take all our burdens to you and leave it there. And so in obedience to your command, we are leaving it here today. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, God, for your promises. But thank you most of all for your son, who came and died so that we can have that hope of eternal life. Amen. May we all order our lives so that when you come, we will hear from you, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of my Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the to the sinners. Amen. Please be seated. We'll be ushered out. And um, remember the Daniel Prophecy Seminar at 5 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. May the Spirit of God and the grace of God bless us continually.